Oh, I'm Martin Pat Palmer. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone, for uh, allowing me to be here today. I've given a few um, presentations lately, um, but uh, for some reason I'm a little bit nervous today, so I hope I um, make sense to you. I need to apologise in advance to a couple of people in the audience because you might see your photo in, the one, in one of the pictures. If you have a problem, probably see Luke about it. <laughs> That's all right, Luke. Okay, so... Um, Deaf education, what's, what's changing? Um, I've been in education for almost 30 years and I still absolutely love my job. Uh, I've been involved in deaf education now for almost a decade. I completed my, master, my formal learning about deaf education, uh, my master's in 2012. So I want to talk about what I've seen change in deaf education since then. Okay, when I left uni, it was a pretty, a pretty grim view for deaf people. There were lower expectations for deaf students, okay? They had all those language problems, so it was accepted that they'd be about three years behind their hearing peers. Now, academically, if you're three years behind, you can imagine how that would be socially, emotionally, and what that would do to your confidence. Deaf children were socially isolated, and this is a huge contributing factor to the fact that in the, in the deaf population, there's a much higher risk of mental health problems than in the hearing population. Hearing population in something like depression, there's about 15% of people experience that. In the deaf population, that leaps up to about 45%, which is huge, okay? And then there's the debate about language that David touched on before. Do we aid them up, get them speaking? Do we give them sign language? If we get them signing, is it going to impede their, their speech development? All of this was going on, and so, as I said, when I left uni, I thought, hmm, that's not looking too good. So, I want to tell you how we're addressing these things at Mosman Park and how things are changing. I missed that one. Okay. First of all, with our kids, we don't tell them about that research, okay? We give them a very strong message that deaf kids can, okay? These are our children. We have got a range of kids from profoundly fully deaf, from deaf families fully signing, to very mild hearing loss, completely oral, and everything in between, okay? We have a really strong team working at school. Okay, there's me, the principal. We've got our teachers who are amazing. Our teachers know the curriculum. They know how to connect kids to the curriculum. And I think one of the biggest strengths is that our teachers don't focus on the child's deficits. They focus on their strengths, okay? They know how to use the children's strengths to build the individual child up and help them shine. The kids are just thriving in, in the classes. The EAs, our Auslan EAs, these guys are on their toes all the time, okay? Kids learn through immersion in language and these guys are the ones who need to provide it all of the time. Anything that's voiced in the classroom has to be signed, anything that's signed has to be voiced so that everyone's on the same playing field and the kids don't miss anything. Okay. Oops, wrong one. Sorry, deaf role models. If you've heard me speak before, you know I think now deaf role models are worth their weight in gold. And we have deaf role models in every class, they go on every excursion, and they're involved in a lot of the decision making in the school as well. Why do we need them? They are a living example of what we're trying to teach our kids, that deaf kids, deaf people can succeed. They can teach our kids deaf culture. I can tell you about deaf culture, I can tell you lots about deaf culture, but I cannot teach it to you. That's what our deaf role models are for. Our deaf role models are native users of the language that our children need to learn, which is so important. Our deaf role models teach kids how teach kids how they can manage in a hearing world. They've been there, they've got through those problems. They can show them what to do. And they also have this amazing way of explaining things, okay? I have explained something to a deaf child and got a blank face. Look to the interpreter, they've explained it to the deaf child blank face. The, the deaf role model explains it to me, I think it's the same as what I said, but bang, the kid understands, they get it, and we can move on, okay? And it's kind of along, along the lines of having a deaf interpreter, okay? They've just got that, that connection. What are we doing about um, the deaf uh, isolation? Uh, isolation is a huge problem for kids and the uh, psychologists will say the first thing you need to do to treat it is increase social opportunity, 
Okay? Oh, yeah, and some of your kids might be in these photos too. <laughs> um, so we give them plenty of social opportunity. Our kids are normal kids. They go out and play. They have problems with their friends. They have to sort them out. And this is how they develop their strong social skills. Okay? Our kids are linked by their language and their culture. As I said, we have a whole different range of, of deafness in our school and different languages used. And some of our kids choose to be in the mainstream, supported by an interpreter. One child, she's been in the mainstream from pre uh, kindy and she's now in year six, happily working in the mainstream class, achieving well, but every recess at lunchtime, she makes a beeline to the deaf kids to play with them because they've got that cultural link and that language link and she always wants to be around her people, okay? Um, we keep our kids in touch with the broader deaf community. This is last week we went to the Auslan Day at TAFE. It's great for our kids to know that they are part of a, a much bigger community than just our school. All right. Uh, we have links with Shenton College, which is the school that they will hopefully be moving on to. And as you can see, Oh, if you've ever been to a deaf event, it's like a big family reunion, okay? Here we have our students meeting up with some students from before, uh, and they're very excited to see each other. They're just like a family. Our kids get the opportunity, just like every normal hearing kids, to participate in sport, okay? We are on the same site as a mainstream school, the hearing school, so they join them. They get the opportunity to participate, to be challenged, and to learn how to win and lose. Really important life skills. They build friendships that flow out into their personal lives out of school, okay? Um, they, they build up a good network that they can catch up over the weekends. Our kids live a long way away from each other, but they still, through uh, their social network, get to stay in touch. Uh, we do have good links with Shenton College. This gives our kids a good sense of direction, know where they can, can head if they choose, keeps them aware of all their opportunities. Okay, so that's how we are addressing their social opportunity. What are we doing about the language? Well, we don't have time for the debate to be solved. What David said before is great news. We just need our kids to have language right now. So we give them the best of both. We give them full uh, English, full Auslan. This is where I, I say our um, EAs are kept on their toes all the time. If you look at this, this isn't our normal classroom structure, but this is how it works. We have someone signing. In this case, it's one of our deaf role models, someone voicing. And you can see uh, one of the, our interpreters sitting there watching the children. She will be voicing anything the kids start to sign. And it just makes sure that if there's some communication going on in the room, everyone is involved in it. They, the kids are not missing stuff just because they can't hear it. Um, and you can see they're quite happy. Um, the year six boys, or oh, any year four boy, uh, this is story time. You can just see they're relaxed, they're focused, and they're engaged, okay? We have l much fewer behavioural problems when we make sure all the kids can access what's going on. Here we use our deaf role models. This is where the pictures are coming in. Our deaf role models to, uh, really help engage our kids. If a kid's not engaged, they're not going to learn a thing. So our deaf role models share that with them. This is Josh, one of our deaf role models. He, we call him the uh, Auslan police. Uh, not only is he great working with the kids, but our deaf role models also keep us on our toes and make sure that the Auslan we're using is correct and it's at the top level. They're native Auslan users, they know. If we're not sure, we refer to our deaf role models. We use, obviously, we have interpreters. We've got some awesome interpreters now who work so well with our kids with all their different needs. And it's also lovely for the kids sometimes to be able to just sit back and enjoy a story in their native language. As you can see, this little girl's enjoying it. Okay, the last problem that we expected, we um, encountered in uni was the expectations. And expectations, what does that mean? One minute. Okay, expectations are huge. Expect if you have low expectations, that's what you're going to get from kids. So we have huge expectations. We expect our kids to behave. We teach them how by using our values team. As you can see, they're all signing the different values that we want from them. 
We expect our kids to play nicely together. We expect our kids to be up to the date with the latest technology. You can't see the robot at the bottom there that he's controlling. Um, our kids are do, doing 3D printing through our specialised science program. We expect our kids to understand their world, okay? They understand why we have an Anzac um, ceremony. They're, uh, here they're working on tectonic plates. We expect them to know about the world that they're living in. We expect our kids to have excellent social skills in sc school and out of school. We model this as adults. Everything we do, we interact out loud so they can hear or see us problem solving and, and sorting out our problems. That's how they learn. And we take them out and about a lot of times so they can practice that out, out in the real world. We expect our kids to understand cultural celebrations. That is not chocolate day, okay? It is Easter, we expect them to understand. And we expect them to understand different cultures. We expect them to enjoy learning. As you see at the top, we really engage them, but we expect them to work hard and show responsibility. Oliver is a deaf uh, Oliver here, the student, is being used as a deaf role model to model to the younger students, giving him that opportunity to be responsible. You can't just be responsible without practicing it. We expect our kids to learn and we expect them to see. Uh, to succeed. So what's changed at Mosman Park? We are uh, now creating kids for the new research, the new generation. We expect them to be good friends, good students. We expect them to achieve their potential and be happy. And we expect them to know that deaf kids can. Thank you.